If you've been in the industry for any amount of time, you're familiar with the name Cloud9. Today, we're talking to Cloud9 CEO Mike Russell about the solution that set the bar for web-based practice management software. Let's get started. <music> Welcome to another episode of Ortho Thrive. I'm your host, Richie Gerzon. Today we have Mike Russell joining us. Mike serves as the Chief Executive Officer of Cloud9 Software and has over 25 years of experience in the commercial software industry. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you, Richie. Nice to be here. So just to give us a little bit more about your career, their path, and how you got to where you are today. Okay. You know, it's, uh, it's been a bit of an unconventional uh, career path to get to, uh, to, to my current position. So um, I actually have a degree in aerospace engineering, but my first job out of grad school was actually with a bank where I served as an information systems auditor. It was really my first opportunity to see information processing applied to business at scale. Um, and that afforded me an opportunity to move into uh, the next phase of my career, which is really around FinTech and specifically payments processing and risk management. Uh, for, for banks and credit unions. And uh, I was fortunate in that from that platform, I was able to jump over more into the private equity industry where okay. I began taking on roles as a uh, software company operator. And you know that's really been the world I've been in for the last 10 or 11 years and with increasing levels of responsibility. And you know, most recently I was honored to be offered the opportunity to, to come on board here at Cloud9. And, uh, you know, it's been about a year and a half uh, in, in the seat here uh, with Cloud9. Yeah, so a year and a half, that puts you right before COVID. So what was that like just starting at that time? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's interesting because, uh, and maybe we'll talk about this here in a little bit, but, you know, Cloud9 had been a family-founded, family-run business for about 10 years. And so I came on in December of 2019. Yeah. And uh, yeah, within three months, COVID hit. And, uh, you know, it, it was a challenge, right? As it was for, for many companies, you know, in, in uh, frankly, across the world. But, uh, you know, we, we, we stuck to our knitting and uh, did what we could to serve our customers. And while we transitioned to this more remote world that we're now all fairly used to. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I'd say the team handled it very well. Great. So just tell us, uh, how did Cloud9 start? What's the story there? So Cloud9 started about 11 years ago. Uh, a gentleman named Ken Swinney and his uh, wife, Ann, were the original founders of Cloud9. Uh, Ken was a longtime programmer uh, in the industry and, and really had, I think, had multiple stints at different uh, organizations that are still around today you know, in the orthodontic space. And, um, you know, Ken's a, a really smart guy. He's very uh, entrepreneurial. And he recognized really at the dawn of what I would consider to be the, the cloud computing age, that there was a, a clear opportunity uh, to do something in the cloud for orthodontic practice management. And so, yeah. you know, he and Ann jumped in with both feet, uh, put themselves, you know, uh, you know, in the garage, the proverbial garage and got to work and uh, they, they built cloud nine from the ground up. Yeah. And I've definitely seen where that's a challenge when, you know, a management system is not in the cloud. It definitely can uh, be a little bit annoying at times for sure. Yeah. So, so what is it? What is cloud nine? How is it different than its competitors? So cloud nine is essentially a 100% cloud-based practice management platform for orthodontists, pediatric dentists, and practitioners who really operate on both sides of that in a combined or multi-specialty practice. From a differentiation standpoint, what I would say is, um, unlike you know, most of what you see out there today, Cloud9 really was built from the ground up to be on the cloud, right? Literally the first line of code, as we just talked about with Ken, uh, you know, he wrote it from the ground up intending to be a cloud-based system. And so, you know, what that affords is an opportunity to really have the freedom of platform, freedom of location. Uh, you know, there's no requirement to have any local um, servers. There's no local install of software. 
And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, that flexibility means a lot, right? Particularly, again, we just talked about the pandemic and the ability to operate more flexibly, more remotely mm -hmm. uh, has really, you know, underscored the value of not being tethered to a device or a machine that has to be located in your Yeah, office. I think 2020 made that abundant, abundantly clear to many people for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, to me, operating on the cloud, I think is almost in people's minds and accepts, you know, accepted as it's, it's what's expected, I should say, you know, yeah. for any type of software, at least there should be a version on the cloud. At least, if, I mean, when Microsoft finally got on the cloud, you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say, How long they, did it take for Word to be on the cloud? Yeah, yeah when, when, when they give up the ghost and finally moved Office, you know, the Office suite of applications to be cloud enabled. Yeah, that, that was definitely a marker for sure. So what kind of services do you guys offer? Well, you know, uh, obviously the, the, the core service of, of the practice management system, but in order to get there, there are really a couple of key things that, that we also deliver as service, right? So first off, when you get on board with Cloud9, there's the need for training, right? You've got to become familiar with how to use the software properly, how to use the most uh, uh, valuable elements of it uh, on yeah. a consistent basis. And so we certainly don't assume that people can simply, you know, sign up and, and be, you know, self-guided. So we, we do have professional trainers that go out in the field and work with practices who are onboarding to Cloud9. So that's first. And then for those practices that are not startups, but rather are existing practices who are transitioning over from uh, other practice management systems, we offer a full you know, suite of conversion services, right? So we've got oh, you know, nice. uh, about 10 years of experience and having built and executed uh, you know, conversion programs and conversion routines that really grab all the data and images from an existing practice management platform and import them cleanly and correctly into cloud nine. And so- Yeah, I'm sure that's an obstacle for many practices and yeah. doctors that, that change, you know, can be stressful and- Well, and it's also, you know, there, there, there's uh, obviously a lot of value and a lot of importance in that data, right? So you've got to make sure you get it, you get it right. It, it, you know, it's, it's, you're talking about medical records, you're talking about financial records, uh, you know, and it's just something that, uh, you know, a practice, a doctor doesn't want to have to worry about or think about as they're contemplating the move from one platform to another, right? They, they should be confident that if they make that decision and they go through that process, that they're going to be 100% okay with the information that's been ported over. Yeah, absolutely. So who do you consider your target market for this solution? You know, um, I, I would tell you that our, our core has always been in orthodontics, but, you know, the, the, again, back to the, the, the cloud nature of, of our software, the reality is, is that it scales, and, and I won't say it scales infinitely, but it's pretty close, right? And what yeah. I mean by that is, you know, we can have a startup, right? A new grad directly out of school who you know, has just hung their shingle on the door, opened up their new office and maybe has themselves and one or two you know, assistants working with them and Cloud9 is a perfect fit, right? It, 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 you know, they, they, they use it and they buy it based on the volume of licenses that they need. Uh, but at the other end of the spectrum, you've got the largest multi office practices, OSOs, DSOs, who also need the ability to have that scale. And the thing about Cloud9 is it does that, right? So, you know, in terms of the, the target market, clearly orthodontics, but in terms of the size, we're really, we run the full gamut between from the, the very newest to the most well-established and largest uh, organizations in that. That's world. nice that you can kind of go through that whole orthodontist journey and they don't have to change uh, services right in the middle. A absolutely, absolutely. The, 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 the application, uh, you know, scales and grows with you and as, as you need more licenses, you add more licenses. And, you know, again, there's no more hardware, there's no additional software to buy uh, or, or install or download. Um, it really lends itself to be tailor fit for the needs of the practice. So what are some of the benefits for orthodontic practices that use Cloud9? Yeah, I mean, fr from a benefit standpoint, I would say first and foremost is, is again, that freedom, right? The idea that you have the ability to use any platform, any device from any location, 
mm. um, and have complete access to the information within your practice management system, right? Um, you know, I, I, I characterize as general ease of use and control over the information within your practice. And then really efficiency, right? The other part of this is um, you wanna generate a great customer or patient experience, right? And the ability to do that is largely predicated on the information that you have about that patient, where they are, what they need, and having that in a practice management system that allows you to follow the patient around um, really makes a world of difference, so. Wow, so what are the benefits to the patient? Well, from a patient standpoint, again, you get into the situation where, you know, when you come into the office, the doctor and their staff can work that much more efficiently, right? They, they know where you are, they have your accurate information. And um, it really just, you know, helps to expedite the experience in the office for the patient. The other thing that we've got is the ability to enable a patient to interact online with their doctor, right? So we've got a patient portal where if, if a practice selects it, they can activate that and enable their patients to log in and interact with them directly, uh, you know, through, through uh, you know, a practice branded site. Oh, that's nice. Everything's encrypted, I'm sure, mm -hmm. for the communication. Yep. Yeah, I think having that information at your fingertips is very important. And it's over communicating, I think, is uh, important as well in these times. Absolutely. Absolutely. So all right, if you're cloud-based, what happens if the internet goes down? How does that work? You know, it's, it's interesting. I, we actually hear that quite a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I guess the first thing I would say is, you know, I, I would argue in today's world, uh, certainly this is true for some parts of the country, the internet is probably equally as stable and available as electric, right? You know, I mean, yep. in terms of outages and disruptions, uh, you know, the internet has become, you know, so ubiquitous that, that you know, th those kinds of hard down periods are thankfully fairly rare. Uh, when it does happen, the nice thing about, about Cloud9 is uh, it will work via a hotspot, right? So, you know, um, most people, you know, will use their phone. You know, you can tether other devices to it through Bluetooth or through um, Wi-Fi, but, uh, you know, there are mechanisms that still allow a, an office to get to the internet wirelessly. And, you know, from a bandwidth perspective, even at that limited bandwidth, Cloud9 still works on multiple workstations. And so a practice in that situation really would not be in a hard down situation at all. They'd still yeah. be able to operate successfully. Oh, that's great. I mean, it can't, the same can't be said for like a VoIP phone system. So the fact that you can do anything, I mean, I think that's yes. great. Yeah. All right, so um, for people who aren't super familiar with how safe data is in the cloud, can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, you know, I, I, again, a very good question. Um, you know, certainly, you know, in our infrastructure, you know, we, we leverage, um, you know, commercial data centers, right, which is where we host our, our application. And so, you know, w without getting into too many specifics, there are clearly layers of defense that exist, right? That, that not only we have in place in front of the application, but that our hosting providers like AWS or QTS deploy to protect the systems that reside within their, within their, you know, their, their infrastructure. And so, you know, the thing that I would say is, uh, again, with the ubiquity of, ubiquity of the cloud yeah. and usage of the internet, um, I, I, would, I would contend that the first and most important step in protecting data is really just protecting your user ID and your password, right? It, you know, when you look at the statistics of, of you know, d data uh, being breached, you know, I, I don't know the exact percentage, but a significant percentage really boils down to issues of social engineering and the ability of someone to, you know, compromise a person's ID and password and get in. So, um, you know, I, I'd say that that would be the most important, but you know, the other thing I would say is just because the data is in the cloud doesn't inherently make it less secure than if it's on a box sitting in an office that's connected to the internet, right? If you think about the various stories that you've heard around either virus or other malware attacks or ransomware attacks, um, you know, the, the reality is, is that, um, you know, th th there's, there's a lot of risk across the board, right? It's not inherently more risky to have something in the cloud versus any other, you know, internet connected device. Yeah, I agree. I mean, to me, 
having something in just one place to me is scarier than having it in multiple <laughs> yes. places. Yes. <laughs> I mean, so, it's on yeah. one device, that one device, who knows what could happen. And then all of a sudden. Right. Well, and, and even, <laughs> you know, just take it a step further, you've got that one device, who knows what happens there. But, but then presumably if you have that one device, you've got good data protection practices and you're making backups. So now yeah. you've got multiple backups floating around and, you know, then you've got to contend with security and control over, over those backups. And, you know, so, uh, you know, it, it, there, there's a lot of complexity in it uh, beyond just being in the cloud. So, okay. Yeah. So you said it's available via the phone. Is it through an app? How does that work? Yeah, actually, it, the, there, we, we have an app in beta, but what I was referring to was the idea that most phones uh, or in the, and actually there are some dedicated devices create a, you know, a hotspot, right? So yes, you can basically connect an internet enabled device through a hotspot to get to the web. So that's what I was referring to. Gotcha. So, you know, the, and it's nice uh, that it works that way. Cause sometimes something won't, it won't have enough bandwidth to work. So that's good that it does. Yeah. So what's like an ideal practice for cloud nine? You know, uh, I don't know that there is necessarily a specific ideal that we go after, right? And remember from a scalable standpoint or a scaling standpoint, we talked about the idea that we've got the very earliest, you know, just out of school startup practices that operate on cloud nine all the way up to the very largest LSOs. And so there isn't, you know, I, I wouldn't sit here and say that there's a particular sweet spot where, hey, that particular practice is, is you know, ideal for cloud nine. Um, you know, any practice uh, that needs you know, practice management is ideal for us. So yeah. you know, the, the, the reality is, is that, uh, you know, we, we exist to serve any orthodontic practice. And, you know, the thing that I would say is toward the end of last year, we, we formally launched our pediatric capabilities. And so, you know, I would say from an expansion standpoint, organizations or practices that are looking to be multi-specialty with pediatric might, might be an extension of that sweet spot because we think we offer uh, best of breed in terms of a combined solution for those, for those organizations. How does the pediatric software differ than the regular software? Yeah, the, the, the pediatric software primarily focuses on, on three things. Number one, it's got, um, you know, charting, right, for, for uh, pediatric patients. Um, it's got uh, treatment planning uh, that is specifically designed and geared toward pediatric treatment, which is, you know, obviously different than, than orthodontic. And then the last piece is related to the accounting. And, you know, this is the part that, you know, obviously you've got to have the clinical aspects of it, you know, down, down pat, right? But on the back end, you know, the, there's an inherent difference between the accounting for orthodontic uh, versus dental. Uh, and one of the things that we worked, you know, very hard at was to find a way to successfully integrate those into a, you know, a data service ledger where, yeah. where you've got a combined view for a patient across both their orthodontic and their, their, their dental um, you know, services. So you know, th those combined really, you know, I, I would argue, set us apart. And you know, the software again is flexible enough that if you wanna use it for ortho only, you can get it in that configuration. If you want it in pediatric only, you get it there. Or if you are truly running an integrated multi-specialty practice, we support both on an integrated basis. Wow, okay. So uh, what kind of financial investment is there for Cloud9? So from, from a financial standpoint, the way to think about Cloud9 is really just based on that that tiered licensing, right? So, yeah. um, you know, there, there's, there's no, there's no software cost up front. There's no um, hardware investment, assuming you know you've got PCs or laptops, right? You don't have to go out. I hope we can assume that, but I guess <laughs> you never know. <laughs> so, so uh, but but you know, in terms of in terms of the platform itself, it's strictly down to the the tiered licensing based on the number of users that that you need to support your practice uh, operation. Uh, beyond that, I would say it's really just the training, right? As I mentioned earlier, there, there is a training component required because we want to make sure that as we bring practices on, that they're going to be successful on day one uh, of, of going live. And so, so there's, you know, training. And then, of course, for those existing practices that would be converting over from other systems, um, you know, depending on the size and complexity of the work that needs to happen with that conversion, you know, there might be some investment up front there, but I, you know, honestly, it's, it's, it's nominal, 
um, and uh, okay. you know, something that we we work hard to to drive down. Again, leveraging our ten years of experience, um, there are relatively few practice management systems that we haven't seen or been able to successfully convert from. That does make a big difference. You don't want to be learning while you're <laughs> going through that process for sure. Um, so you guys, does your, does cloud nine integrate with other softwares? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, um, cloud nine is a practice management system, uh, really, uh, forms the backbone of the operation, right. For a practice. And in, in that context, what we do is we actually have a published set of APIs or application programming interfaces. And, um, what that does is that allows uh, you know a, a essential constellation of third parties who exist out there in the market to integrate with us um, and leveraging these APIs they can get real-time connection and real-time visibility into the data or at least some of the data that's stored within cloud nine so uh, you know our our, our belief uh, is it's better to be open and, and, and flexible. And when I say open, what I mean is it's better to be willing to work with as many partners um, as, as makes sense for our customers, right? The market drives who they want to work with. And while, you know, we, we you know, are headed down a path where we will begin to do more uh, in terms of offering integrated services that are core to cloud nine, uh, you know, our philosophy has always been, you know, if you're a vendor and you've got a solution that will sell in the market and, and it makes sense to, to join forces with us. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're, we're open to that. So. I think that's a really good kind of mindset to have because it's so frustrating when you have a great piece of software that doesn't play nice with anything else. I mean, yeah, I think, you know, we, when we're building websites with our sales engine, we build them using WordPress. And one of the main reasons besides the ease of it is that it plays well with so many plugins. There's just like a huge library of things. So at any time your website could just gain another piece of functionality that it didn't have before. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's the same reason I use HubSpot it integrates with everything, you know, in the marketing realm. Yep. You know, yeah. I anything, mean, the, anything you care about at least. Yeah. Well, you know, the, 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 the world of uh, the proprietary play, I think, you know, has come and gone, right? You know, the, 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 I, I think you've got to be open and able to integrate with different providers. Um, and again, that's not to say or to preclude that we might say one day, hey, we want to build this functionality natively within the application. Mm -hmm. But again, even if we head down that path, that doesn't necessarily mean that we preclude others from participating in the market, because again, our interest is in the success of our practices, right? And, and if a practice says, look, I like that you have feature X, but the reality is, is I really would prefer to work with this person's feature X because it does these three or four other things that you don't do. Okay, well, fair, fair, you know, that, that's totally fine. We support yeah. that, so. Yeah, that's great. Do you, um, what, is there anything on the horizon for Cloud9 that you wanna talk about? Uh, you know, there's always something on the horizon. Let, yeah. let me <laughs> in a software, a SaaS yeah, company, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let, let, me, let me sum it up this way. Uh, if I were to boil it down to one word, it would be investment, right? So the, the yeah. thing about Cloud9 is, um, and, and this sort of gets back to me coming on board about, you know, a little more than a year ago. Um, you know, our goal is to, to really invest in this business and grow Cloud9, right? Um, and so when you think about the investments that we're making, right, we're making investments in our infrastructure, we're making investments in the product, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're making investments um, to um, improve our customers' experience with us. So, you know, th th there, there's a constant thread of, of thought here where we are focused on, you know, getting Cloud9 to be the absolute best practice management system that's available. And, and our mission, you know, and, and if you talk to other people from Cloud9, hopefully they'll be able to quote this as well. But really, you know, our mission is, you know, we exist to make our practices the most successful successful practices in the world. Um, nice. and, 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 and that's really the sort of the, the touchstone that we direct everything that we do around. So, um, you know, I would just say, stay tuned. We're, we're working hard and, uh, there's a lot of good stuff in the pipeline coming coming out. 
Okay. All right. So looking back, I, I've talked to a few software companies and COVID during that time, it either accelerated some features or some features of their software became like really obviously more valuable to the public. Did you experience any of that last year? Yeah, you know, um, y- yes and no. I mean, clearly the, the, there were some features that were more patient facing that, yeah. that you know, were, were uh, in very, very high demand uh, last year. Um, and we, we partnered with uh, one or two organizations to help deliver some of those for our practices. Um, but, you know, the, the, the reality is, is that uh, we, we are focused on a long-term roadmap. And so hmm. um, we, 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 were, we did our best, I think, to, to, to balance between the, the sort of the very short-term, near-term need for the pandemic versus what we also understood that we had to continue focusing on long-term, you know, for, for, for the product and, and, and really for our customers long-term. So, I mean, uh, you were positioned already in a very good place because yeah, you were cloud-based. A lot of people were playing catch up to what you already have going on. So I could see that. That's totally Yeah, reasonable. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And, and again, it gets back to the, our point earlier where, you know, we, we operate in an environment where there are a lot of niche players who integrate with us. And so um, in, in many cases, it makes more sense for a niche player who is going to focus very narrowly on this particular function to be the people that we partner with to deliver that to our customers, right? So, yeah. um, you know, it, it, it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense for us to uh, try to be all things to all people, right? From a, from yeah. a functionality standpoint, that, you know, that, that's really the value of the partnership community that we've got. What do you think the value of just having that virtual interaction is? You think that's here to stay? Is it going to grow? Is it going to wane? What would your prediction be for that kind of behavior with organizations you know, in the public? You know, it's it's a great it's a great question. Um, I think there are some aspects of the pandemic that will persist. Or let me rephrase that: some aspects of our response to the pandemic that will persist. Like for instance, I think there'll be a continuation of a lot of work from home. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I think we've learned some things that people were always nervous to really fully test and we were forced to test it, you know, in this in this scenario over the last year and a half. But uh, I think there are some elements or some aspects that, that frankly, are going to go away pretty quickly. And one of those, um, you know, might might be, you know, I'm sure everybody's ready to start going out dining again. Right. You know, so yeah, so, right. <laughs> So, you know, when, it, when it comes to patient interaction, uh, it, it's a great question. I. I I have a tendency to think that it's more likely that patients are going to prefer to come back to the office to, 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 to see the doctor. I think there's mm-hmm. real value. I think there's real value in going in and, and, and speaking with the clinicians, right? Having the doctor do the, the evaluation, see you in person, talk to you in person. Um, I, think, I think a lot of the virtual stuff we've done out of necessity, but I don't know that the, that the long-term value remains the same when we have the option to safely do it in person. I agree. I was, um, my wife was just watching a virtual concert the other day and, you know, I was playing with my son and I was sort of paying attention and I just couldn't get past the fact that, you know, what is the real value of this compared to a concert? I mean, the energy you get there, it's not even close. It's just pales in comparison. The energy, the experience, the vibe, All, all of it is, you know, it's, it's, yeah. I'm so gonna, I, I think I agree with you in many of those aspects. I, I think a lot of people now know how to use Zoom, for instance. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be like, how does this work? <laughs> you know, you can incorporate it into your process, but I do think I definitely miss more in person interaction. I can tell. Yeah. You I, I, and like I said, I, I think, I think it's, it's really that it, it, it comes down to the human connection. Right. And especially in healthcare, right. In, yeah. in healthcare, you know, tell me, I mean, think about it this way. Um, you know, prior to the pandemic, uh, most of us probably had access to telemedicine, right. Where you could call a number. And, and, and I mean, I remember the, the benefits that, that we had at my former company, you know, you could call a number and you could speak with a nurse or potentially a physician's assistant or a doctor, um, you know, if you just needed to have some quick treatment. But my general sense is that there wasn't huge adoption for that, 
because people were, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm a sample of one, but include myself, you know, people just have a natural tendency to prefer to see someone in person. And if I think about in particular, the orthodontic process, yeah, the, 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 the importance of that, the investment that, that a family is making, you know, typically, um, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It just feels to me like something that, that when it's safe to do so will likely revert more toward, toward an in-person experience again, but we'll especially when it has to do with your kid. I mean, that's totally a different story. If you're bringing a child somewhere, I'd like, you like to feel it out for sure. I mean, look, the, re the reality is, is either way, uh, you know, for, at least from a cloud nine perspective, you know, we, we're, we're happy to support it in both both modes, if you will, right? We yeah. don't necessarily have a dog in the hunt. So that, that's really just my my perception of where I think it's headed, but we'll see. Gotcha. Um, so I, we noticed you guys rebranded. Is there anything significant about the new branding? Yeah, you know, um, we, we did. Uh, the the, the rebrand really just is, is an acknowledgement that you know, Cloud9 is a, is a name and, and frankly, our, our logo, you know, the, 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 the cloud motif is, um, shall we say, really popular, <laughs> you know? Yes, it, okay, that's it, <laughs> fair. <laughs> probably look across uh, a lot of organizations and a lot of industries and find other Cloud9s out there. And while we certainly don't want to lose our identity as Cloud9, um, we really felt it was time to move away from the, from the cloud motif and, and try to update and refresh a bit. And you know, we settled on the, the you know this this cloud. Excuse me. We settled on this uh, kite icon because you know for, for us a kite you know represents being uplifted. You know, you're still up and among the clouds uh, or on the cloud. And, and and more importantly, we felt it it connected more with the what I'll call the joy and the whimsy that that a lot of our practices uh, try to um, evoke in their environments right so when you ah, go into yes. you know yeah. when, when you go into your orthodontist office um you know more more often than not they're they're geared toward toward children right they're geared toward whimsy and 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 being comfortable and being happy and and you know the the, the last thing you know that we want to see you know or, or have our paint excuse me have our practice uh managers and doctors looking at when they go to click on the favicon for i you know for for uh, cloud nine is some some sort of you know robotic corporate icon, right? We we just we just want it to be fun, right? So and yeah, that's what it should nine. be. So um, we we think it fits in, and uh, you know, again, after ten years, it was probably beyond time for a bit of a refresh. So coming from a marketing perspective, I agree with you. So <laughs> um, does the nine stand for anything particular? I hope that's not a silly question. No, I, I think I, you know, I'd have to go back and ask Ken that question. Uh, I think cloud nine literally is just, you know, it's a heavenly experience. You know, you're, you're, you're on the cloud, you know, you could probably pull four or five different threads on that in terms of all the cloud references, but uh, yeah. I don't think there's anything specific about the number nine. Okay. I foolishly asked a dentist once what, why he had 32 in his name. I was like, oh, that was a really stupid question. <laughs> anyway, uh, so Mike, is there anything else you want to cover before we wrap up? You know, um, I, I'd say first, I want to thank you, Richie. It's been a real pleasure. I appreciate what you do and, and you know, for oh, the thanks. industry and, and, and for, you know, companies like ours. And so it's, it's been great to be here with you today and, and meet you. Uh, and then just two, two quick things. Number one, you know, for our customers who may see this, um, this podcast, you know, I, I really just want to express my thanks and gratitude to them. You know, Cloud9, as I said earlier, exists to serve our customers. And so we really appreciate, you know, the faith that they, they place in us in, in terms of trusting their, their operation to Cloud9. And then lastly, um, I just want to give a shout out to my team, right? So, you know, the Cloud9 team um, is, is phenomenal, right? My, my job as CEO is really to make sure I've got the right team and I'm coaching them and I'm breaking down barriers that they, they can do the great things that they're capable of. And I could not be more proud of my team at Cloud9 and the work that they've done. And I think, you know, we, we've got a lot of great things left to do. And uh, I'm just, I look forward to it. So it, it's, uh, it's a great time. It's a great time. Great. Well, Mike, thanks for being on the show. Had a good time. Thank you. Take care, Richie. You too. 
I'd like to thank Mike Russell again for being on the show. I think he did a great job of helping us differentiate Cloud9 with other practice management software. They really were the first to be cloud-based and they've come a long way since then. If you'd like to be a guest on the show or you have an idea for an episode, go to orthothrive.com. If you want to reach out to me personally, just email me at richard at orthosalesengine.com. Keep grinding, keep thriving, and I'll see you next time.